How you doing? I'm Kevin O'Hara for alcoholmastery.com. This is just a follow-up to a video I've done a couple of days ago. Um, what is wet brain syndrome? Or what is alcoholic wet brain? Alcohol wet brain. Uh, this is about the symptoms of alcoholic wet brain. Um, but this is just another health warning, right? You know, this kind of thing... You know, when, when you're drinking alcohol, um, you don't notice the long-term damage that's being caused because it's a gradual process, you know. It starts from very little. Um, you know, you might first get the hangover, that kind of thing. Then you might notice some aches and pains. Then the aches and pains get a bit worse. But the gradual... Um, the deterioration is gradual, I should say. You know, it just doesn't happen. Um, you start drinking, and then you get up the next morning, and you've you've got a you've got a lot of problems. I think you know we push through those earlier barriers in our lives when we first drink, and we get sick, and we don't like the feeling, we don't like the taste, we don't like anything about it except the psychological thing that it does for us whatever we're looking for you know um it's sort of it's a weird one because i think you know psychologically there must be a lot of alarm bells ringing off in our heads you know but because of that one reason why we're doing it you know a lot of people are turned off in the beginning and go yeah i don't like that shit. i'm not doing that anymore full stop i've done that with uh, a few drugs i've tried LSD for once, um, didn't like that at all. Um, look, I just want to, I'll get onto the symptoms now, but I just wanted to say, you know, it's like, you know, whenever you drink alcohol, it gets into your brain straight away, right? It goes through the blood brain barrier. It's the thing that's protecting your, your brain. There. This is, you know, your, your brain is there control of everything everything that you do is controlled through your brain and all that control comes about through uh, your neurotransmitters right these are the things that send signals to each other and make things happen in the rest of your body right they make your body move you make you talk you make you think um, and it's all a very delicate chemical balance so when somebody says to you um, that alcohol doesn't do anything to your brain. Uh, just think about that. Think about the chemical, the interference of the chemicals that happens in your brain every time the alcohol gets in there. You know, this is not supposed to happen. You know, <laughs> like your your brain is supposed to be uh, an enclosed, secure box inside the skull of your head. You know. That's the, the nerve center of everything. And yet here we do, put this shit into our heads that we know is gonna fuck us around. Um, as I'm going through these symptoms, just notice how close the symptoms are to um, being drunk. Um, this is proper brain damage, right? You know, when you get alcoholic wet brain, this is not, um, uh, it can't be cured. 20% of the time it's fatal, you know, um, in 20% of cases it's fatal. Uh, and you, you're basically screwed, you know. And this is all because we can't stop putting this stuff into our, into our bodies. So what are the symptoms? The first one is difficulty balancing, staggering, and you've got a wide gait, right? And a wide gait means that your sort of legs are spread wide apart, right? Uh, wider than you would normally have them. And you're taking small steps, so it's sort of like a, a shuffling um, gait like that, so shuffling walk. Um, second symptom is a lack of muscle coordination. So, uh, Actually, I'll just stand here and read them out to you. Uh, lack of muscular coordination, confabulation, which is 
uh, remembering things that um, never actually happened. So you're making stuff up in your head as you're going along. Um, the third one is confusion. Um, you know, you basically it's people, uh, you know, they, they don't understand what's going on around them and they don't really give a shit, you know, they, they're sort of apathetic to the whole thing. Um, next one is difficulty forming new memories. Uh, next one is dementia. And I've already said in the last video that um, between 10 and 24% of all dementias are uh, alcohol caused. So all types of dementia are alcohol caused. Uh, hallucinations. And then finally, loss of control over um, eye movements. So, you know, drooping eyelids or their eyeballs are going sort of a bit weird. Now, if you know it's about that, like I said earlier on, I hope you can see there that the first four of these, right, the staggering lack of muscular coordination, the confabulation, the confusion, um, and even the difficulty of forming new memories, right? When it boils down to it, uh, hallucinations, <laughs> drooping eyes. You know, a lot of these are, you get when people are drunk, you know? So think about the most of the conditions that you get while you're drunk are the same things that are going to happen to you if you've got wet brain, except now they're permanent. So you've basically got a permanent drunkenness you know that's what wet brain looks like to me anyway it's um, a permanent drunkenness you know sometimes i listen to my especially in the earlier days when i read about this first of all um i thought am i am i speaking with a slurred accent all the time and i was sort of worried about it you know that i wasn't and i think it was just it boiled down to me being lazy um you know you know, maybe I was used to speaking in that way, you know, with a drunken uh, twang to what I was, what I was coming out with. Um, but it was sort of uh, unnerving to say the least, you know. But as I say, when you look at these things, when you look at the, um, all those symptoms there, um, you know, I've often said in the past as well that it's, you know, it's the same sort of symptoms that we experience when uh, a person is going through a stroke, right? It's a, a lot of the similar, similar stuff is happening to when you're drunk. But this is a lot closer to the mark, you know? So it just goes to prove that, you know, short-term drunkenness, the one that we like, you know, the one that we're aiming to achieve in our lives, you know, that bit of a stagger, that bit of a slur in the words, a bit of confusion, um, not being able to remember the next day. You know, these are short-term signs of um, the consequences on your brain, what's happening inside your brain, you know? That can't be good. Do you know what I mean? I mean, everyone knows, you know, you know yourself, right, that after, after you've been drinking and even when the, the hangover is worn off and you've got through the hangover, um, you're not feeling that anymore. You're not getting any of the symptoms. Uh, you'll still feel foggy. You'll still feel like you're not at your best. Now, you might not because I didn't. Um, you know, I think for towards the end of it, there was a day or two where I was sort of getting, you know, like I was thinking, yeah, Jesus shouldn't be I'm still feeling this hangover or I'm still feeling groggy or, but because this is such a, a long term the effects are so long term um, you don't really notice the damage creeping up on you you know you don't notice that your brain is slower than it used to be because it's such a gradual thing you know it's like aging you know aging is such a gradual process in your life that you don't really you notice it when you've got a pain when you're trying to do something that you used to be able to do but in general as you go through your life you don't really it's not apparent that um aging is is uh, happening you know uh 
I mean, if all of a sudden, you know, when that's why plastic surgery is such a, uh, a popular thing because, you know, uh, you can go into an office, into a plastic surgeon's office, um, in the morning and come out in the afternoon looking 20 years younger, you know, because he's taken away some of your wrinkles and age lines and all that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, so this basically all boils down to one thing, right? Um, alcohol is a toxin. Um, your body doesn't like toxins. When you put this alcohol into your brain, into your body, it's one of the few things that can get into your brain, right? Your brain is the nerve center, the control center of everything else that happens in your body. And there are very delicate chemical um, processes going on in your brain. Um, there are neurotransmitters which rely on these delicate balances um, in order for you to move, to talk, to eat, whatever you're doing in life, whatever activity, thinking that you're doing, you're sleeping, all that kind of stuff relies on these neurotransmitters, right? And alcohol in interferes with the chemicals, which interferes with the paths of uh, the messaging, you know, from these neurotransmitters, right? And this is all you're doing. You know, it's all you putting the alcohol into your brain, into your body. It's another one of those self-caused diseases, you know. There's enough fucking shit out there. There's enough problems out there um, without us doing stuff like this to ourselves. You know, there is a cure for this and that's to stop drinking, you know, before prevention is, before anything happens, you know. Prevention is better than than a cure, you know, stop doing this to yourself in the first place, don't be waiting until something bad happens to you or the doctor gives you bad news, you know, do something about this now, you know, stop doing it, stop putting this stuff into your brain and you have no worries about this, you know, this is a, uh, it's caused by a uh, deficiency of vitamin B1, so uh, thiamine, and obviously, I mean, if, you know, you can get this without being a drinker if you don't have enough B1 in your diet, but as long as you're eating a good, healthy diet, um, then there's no reason why you would be um, deficient in this vitamin, right? Um, the reason why, on a lot of occasions, it happens with people who are heavy drinkers is because the alcohol um, stops the assimilation of the uh, thiamine from um, getting into your body from being assimilated. Um, or because you're drinking, you're not eating properly. Um, so, boils down to it, you know, guys, it's a, it's a self-caused thing, you know. Stop the drinking and, you know, you're not going to be at risk of this. So, uh, I hate doing these videos, you know. I much prefer to do the, to do the, um, the positive videos, but I think, you know, I have to try and inform people, you know, of the, the risks of this thing, you know. Some people don't do anything unless they, um, they, they see the stick, you know, and yeah, I never like doing them. But anyway, that's, that's it for this video. So if you have any comments at all, leave them down below. Um, come over to the website and you'll, you can get the audio for this, listen to the audio or any of the audios uh, for any of the videos that you watch here. Um, Sign up for the newsletter if you haven't done that already. There's a free video course there um, as soon as you sign up. And until next time, I'm Kevin O'Hara for alcoholmastery.com. Onwards and upwards.